We asked Marshall McLuhan what influence Wyndham Lewis had on him. Good heavens, I, uh, that, that's where I got it. <laughs> it was Lewis who put me onto all this study of the environment as, uh, as an educational, as a teaching machine. Uh, that, well, the, to use our more recent terminology, uh, Lewis uh, was the person who showed me that the man-made environment was a teaching machine, a programmed teaching machine. But he, earlier, you see, the uh, symbolists had discovered that the work of art is a programmed teaching machine. It's a mechanism for shaping sensibility. Well, Lewis simply extended this private art activity to the corporate activity of the whole society in making environments that basically were artifacts or works of art and that acted as teaching machines upon the whole population. Why was this book of poems called One Way Song? In many of his writings he asserts the primacy of the, of the visual in his perception and his um, general uh, feeling of preference for the visual over the other senses, his feeling was that uh, the passion for musical form in the later 19th century and in his own time uh, betrayed this, uh, betrayed our traditional visual values. Now, the clue then to one-way song may be in the, the fact that the visual sense is the only sense we have that is continuous and connected. All the other senses are discontinuous, whether touch, which every moment of which is different from every other moment, or hearing, which is discontinuous. The interval is necessary for the very active hearing. In sight alone, or in the visual alone, is there a continuum a connected universe that we associate with rationality and detachment. But one-way song seems to draw attention to these qualities of rationality and detachment and continuity and connectedness in thought and perception. Now, back to Wyndham Lewis in 1940.